Hello, this is Breuer, and welcome to a brand new Let's Play for Civilization VI. Uh, normally, I start these games you know, with a random uh, at the menu and stuff like that, and kind of random it up and stuff, stuff of that nature. But I decided to jump right into this one um, for very specific reasons. This is going to be a very unusual uh, playthrough. I I'm going to do what what I'm going to be terming, I guess, is a, a a one turn a victory. Now I didn't say turn one victory to be very clear. And I I'm probably going to call this a one turn victory on the uh, the title of the of the of the videos. Uh, so hopefully it wasn't too clickbaity. <laughs> you know, people are like, okay, you're going to win on turn one. No, that's, that's not what I said. One turn victory uh, is is a slightly different thing. What I mean by that, I did this years ago in Civilization Five. It was not intentional necessarily. Um, I got so far behind in technology and, and, and military power to everybody else that I realized that the only way I, I wasn't going to be able to win a war where I took everybody's cities be, uh, one by one because uh, I knew that I, if I took somebody's city, I wouldn't be able to hold it. I was so far behind. I was not going to be able to hold any of the cities that I took uh, and I was basically going to lose. But I, I came up with a very strange strategy that, that back then where uh, it just so happened that all of the cities were on the coast. And I was like, wait a minute. That opens up a very interesting door. And what I did was I was able to build up enough of a fleet to park right off their, their borders and uh, and take all of their capitals in one turn, knowing that I couldn't hold them. But as soon as I took the last capital, the game was over. So it didn't matter. I didn't have to hold them. I only had to take them for one turn. Uh, and so that is kind of what we're going to go for here is uh, is basically build up enough of a military uh, or I guess a naval power, if you if you will that I will be able to declare war on all of the other civilizations and take all of their stuff within one turn. Um, it's a little bit risky. Now, now here's some here's some things that I did do. I, it's archipelago map. Um, so obviously lots of violence, lots of water. But I also went through the advanced settings and made sure that the water level, the sea levels were as high as it could be. So hopefully there's a, even less land and even more water to, uh, to make it a little bit more guaranteed that the people are going to be kind of right on the coast. Um, I, I, we're obviously not right on the coast right here, so hopefully there's not anybody else like that. I guess we will find out. Uh, although, I would still be able to bombard uh, like a city like this with a bunch of battleships. And I should be able to get a, a land unit through like a low-lying terrain here. Although, this is this is over across the river and into hilly terrain. So, if somebody else is similar to this, we might have some trouble. Uh, I guess we'll find out. I guess, I suppose, if, if it's something like this, the best I can possibly do is declare war on them a turn earlier so I can land a unit, but then not actually... That, that sounds almost cheating. I don't know. We'll see. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. But the idea here, the premise here is, like I said, a one-turn uh, victory. Um, now, another thing that I did do to kind of help hopefully guarantee that we have all coastal cities uh, is that I, I actually did a bunch of the uh, the coastal um, civilizations. I went ahead and picked all of the naval cities, powers. I, I got Norway. I've got... Uh, uh, Netherlands, I've got Indonesia, uh, I picked Germany. They're not really coastal, but they do have a, a submarine, obviously, which is a coastal unit. So I thought maybe it would kind of air them close to the coast. I, I'm not hundred percent sure on that one. That might be one of my, my, my Achilles heel there. That might be the one that gets me. Uh, I did pick, um, what else did I pick? Uh, I said Indonesia. I got, um, uh, Norway, Netherlands, there's three others. I picked there's there's eight total counting me. Um, and there's three others. So the other three are who would else I pick? Oh, I picked the guys that start in the middle of the water. Uh, what what are they they called? The, the Maui. I picked the Maui guys. So they're they're probably going to be coastal because they're going to probably found the city as soon as they land on land. They start out in the middle of the ocean. Um, I picked there's two others that are coastal. I completely oh England. Uh, definitely picked England. I only picked the Victoria England though. I did not pick um the uh eleanor england i could have picked her and she would have been fine but victoria england should be enough and there's one other i'm forgetting the name of it but i it, whatever it was it has ships so oh i know it was uh uh the new one from uh gathering storm um um wow the first civilization that i played from gathering storm and i'm suddenly mind blanking the name uh oh well phoenicia goodness wow so she obviously has ships and she only has a lot of uh of naval stuff Sorry about for forgetting the names there. It's too many, too many civilizations in this game. Uh, I am playing Brazil, which <laughs> it's not necessarily the, the you know, like you would think the strongest naval power. But the reason I'm playing them is that I feel like by the time I'm ready to, to, to pull the trigger on this, 
I'm going to be around the time of, of battleships. And obviously, uh, uh, Brazil gets if the, basically the strongest battleship in the game, um, which is going to be incredibly helpful. Plus, they get it earlier. They get it a whole era earlier if you can stay on top of your culture. They get it through the culture tree, so i got to be careful with the culture side of things. Make sure I'm going deep into that uh, side of things. Um, but their uh, unique battleship, uh, which I will show here, and I always mispronounce the name, so I'm probably just not even going to try it. The Ministres, Ministeris, or however you say it. This is an incredibly strong battleship. And uh, I think it's going to be a lot of fun to try this thing out. It should be able to just decimate whatever cities we come across. I uh, should be able to get enough of them close by, decimate the cities, and then swoop in with a bunch of melee units or melee ships or whatever and, and take the cities all in one turn. Um, some key things that I am definitely going to be going for. I, I really, uh, it will be very helpful to get any of the wonders that give me uh, increased movement on water. So Great Lighthouse. Uh, Colossus does too, doesn't it? I know the Great Lighthouse does, but I think the Colossus does as well. Um, some of the great admiral ones might be okay, which is like what the mausoleum of Halicarnassus. Halicarnar words are hard tonight. Sorry about that. It's ten forty-one p.m. It's not that late. Come on now. Um, and then uh, a very critical one, I think. I mean, I could do it without, but it's just going to slow it down. Would be the Venetian arsenal. I really want to make a beeline for Venetian, Venetian arsenal and make sure that we can get that one. That was just going to make so much easier to just pop out all the ne necessary naval units that I need at the right time. Uh, you might notice that I did bump it up to. 750 turns so that's the uh epic game speed right the standard epic and then the last one's marathon yeah so epic game speed um reason for that is just i don't know maybe it's gonna be a mistake but the slower game speeds the ones with the longer turns it's a lot easier for you to do military type stuff and so i'm going to be able to get uh, once i get my military going i'm be able to get it further across the water in less game time so to speak in less like era time if you will uh, than if it was on one of the faster speeds. So uh, I'm going to have a lot of traveling to get everything set up, and I want to make sure that in that time of, of moving, maneuvering my units, like the other civilizations don't suddenly advance in the areas to, to something that's impossible for me to do that game. So a slower speed means that my units, you know, if my unit moves 10 tiles uh, or whatever it is, then uh, that's a less amount of game time, if that makes sense. I've, I've explained this before, and I'm doing a terrible job explaining it now, but the slower game times greatly benefits military units, and that's that's the whole goal of this. So... I've been seven and a half minutes of describing exactly what I'm going to do and having it done taking a single turn. So apologies for that. But hopefully that lays the groundwork for what we're going for here. Um, as far as my city here, I'm sitting there kind of looking at it. I'm thinking I might just t cost a, like uh, sacrifice my first turn and move over here onto this um, Plains Hills tile. I mean, I am sitting on a Plains Hills tile, to be fair, but it does consume the jungle if I did that. If I come over here, man, I could immediately work. Not only would I get the still Plains Hills, so I'd get the extra production from that, but I'd be able to immediately work this amazing ivory tile, which is two food, three production, and a gold. That would be a very, very nice tile to work right away. Now, the problem is if I move off of this, I move off of the river, which isn't the absolute end of the world. Um, it's a lot of production early on. Yeah, you know what? I'm going to do it. Moving away from the river might be a mistake, but I want to preserve as much of this jungle as possible. I am playing with the most recent patch, which has uh, where jungles uh, give you more production. They can actually get lumber mills to give you more production. So if we can preserve as much of the jungles as possible, that's a big win for us, especially as Brazil, because we get some cool bonuses there for Brazil. Uh, speaking of Brazil, real quick, obviously we talked about their battleship. Uh, they also get uh, rainforest, rainforest tiles provide plus one adjacency bonus for campuses, commercial hubs, holy sites, and theater square districts. All the districts basically just about uh, get some extra adjacency bonus and rainforest tiles provide plus one housing for neighborhoods built adjacent to them as well. So preserving the rainforest is going to be a really good deal for us as Pedro here, if at all possible. We also get two uh, special infrastructures, the Street Carnival and the Copacabana. Uh, both of them are basically the same, but they give us some really special... Um, um, projects that you can get you can run the carnival project which gives you lots of uh cool great people points stuff like that which we might take advantage of that um, because a couple of good great people would be uh, very useful and then of course pedro himself does allow us to recruit uh great people uh at uh, uh, with not necessarily a discount but we get some of that money or some of that <laughs> some of those points in return to us which is pretty awesome so um and great some great people especially some of the engineers that we can rush some of the key wonders that we want might come in handy so let's go ahead and move off over here and go with that. I think that's going to be just just okay, just fine. And uh, yeah, let's go ahead and go ahead. And finally, nine minutes, ten minutes into this game, 
we're going to start our first turn. <laughs> Apologies for that. Hopefully that wasn't too boring. But I really wanted to lay the groundwork for what we we're trying to accomplish because it's kind of unique and weird and different and unusual. And I don't know. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We might not get it, but it's going to be fun trying. Um, now, I did say we definitely want to make a beeline for the Venetian Arsenal. Kind of ASAP. And the Venetian Arsenal is da -da -da -da, way over here. So we are going to want to hug this upward, you know, path, if you will, uh, quite a bit. We've already got the boost to sailing. I mean, why not? Let's, oh, 90 turn turn. Oh, it's because we haven't actually calculated the science that we're getting. Allows our builders to embark. Um, nothing really fishing related over here, which is kind of a, kind of a negative. Could also go ahead and just go for like some mining or something like that. Try to get some early, early production growing. And we're going to need a lot of this other stuff for sure anyway as the game progresses. That is that is a guarantee. What what kind of resource does our unique battleship take? It is... Where is it? Right here. Look how early it's nationalism. Like this so... Industrial era. We're going to get a battleship stronger than anybody else's battleship. This is insane. Um, it does take coal. So we are going to want to make sure we have some coal and that will... <laughs> Definitely put a huge dent in everything if we do not end up with any. Uh, you know, let's go ahead and just get sailing. It's already boosted. Um, why not? Let's just go ahead and start rolling towards that. That's going to be okay. And for you, we're going to go ahead and pick up a uh, scout. We are on island, so I know we don't have a whole lot of exploration to do. But with all the jungles and hills and things like that, our warrior is going to move very slowly. So let's go ahead and get the scout out. We are going to want to make sure we do, you know, keep an eye on our culture. Culture is going to be very critical for us to keep rolling because, again, that is what opens up the doorway for our our amazing battleships and getting them online as soon as possible and getting whole, enough of them out so that we can guarantee that that one turn victory is going to be pretty critical um let's go ahead and pick up this new population that's actually very helpful i'm assuming you're already working that which you are and then you're going to work this those are actually two really good tiles we're getting a ridiculous amount of production out of this early city All right, there's a few sea resources down here. So another another city down this way would be useful. I mean, I expect we're going to be on a relatively small island. That was the goal of the settings that I put in. So we are going to want to uh, move off of this island relatively quickly. I did lower the disasters all the way down to zero, which does mean I think we still get some disasters from time to time. But I made it very, very low because that's not that's not what we're playing for here. I've played on max disasters multiple times. If you want to see one of those videos, by all means, look them up. Um, but the disasters was not necessarily adding anything to this game. I think we're going to have enough of a challenge as is. So I decided to just lower the disasters down just to kind of give us a little bit there. Since we're probably on a very small island, I don't think we're going to have any, um, enemies super, super close. I could be wrong. We'll find out. Uh, but I think I can afford to, honestly, I actually can probably afford to take our brand new settler or new, uh, population that we just got very quickly and roll that into an immediate settler. Let's get another another uh, city up and running real quickly here. Barbarian encampment very close by. It was was it already there and I just missed it, or did it just literally pop up? I think it just popped up, didn't it? Yeah, new barbarian encampment nearby, so that's fine. I'm going to get some attacks here. That's going to be okay. I mean, I guess suppose if there's too many barbarian encampments nearby, that could. Uh, Cause some trouble for my plan to go hard on the settlers right away. All right, well, that scout's running away, but we should be able to block this off from him coming back here. We'll just go here and we'll make sure we heal back up before we go after that spearman. Now, this island's looking to be a little bit bigger than I was expecting. I really hope it works out that all the cities... Oh, that was strange. Uh, all the cities are in the right locations that we want... It's a big gamble. I mean, if they're right off the coast, I still think we can get to them in one turn. Uh, especially if we get what, uh, like some of the melee units that have the uh, no cost or the lower cost from uh, attacking from the sea. Or no penalty, I think it is. Oh, that's no penalty. That's going to be a combat penalty. I don't know if they actually get extra movement. We may have to use like a, a cavalry or, or a tank. Probably, we're going to be close to tanks by then. I don't know if we'll have actual tanks, but maybe cavalry would be good enough. Barbarian's approach. I'm not too worried about that guy because he can't make it back to his thing with us right here on the border of it anyway. It's actually just going to be a defeat. Well, if he tries to attack us, 
We can just run away. We'll attack, heal up, attack, heal up, things like that. Keep an eye on our gold. How, how much do we need for our first builder? It's going to be a little bit more expensive because we're playing on the lower speed. So I have to keep that in mind. Yeah, let's just heal up a little bit here. I do want to get rid of this barbarian encampment before it gets out of hand. Another good place for another city up here next to some uh, some marble and uh, stone and stuff. Next to a river as well. So that should be a useful place. Another barbarian encampment. Okay, that's going to be a little troublesome. It's going to take a while for any barbarian units to get through here, though. So I'm not too worried about it just yet. But we will want to keep an eye on that. Um, in fact, almost to the point of I may just park this this uh, scout right here just to keep an eye on this. And uh, kind of block this pass a little bit. He's on some rough uh, hilly terrain, so he should be good, good and defensive. Let's see, you should be good to do another attack here. We'll heal back up a little bit more. And keep things rolling. It's going to get a little too too low, just in case it pops out another unit here in a second. Oh, a few people have asked about where this thing comes from. Uh, this is built into the game now as of the last patch. Uh, you can get that from... Oh, I was going to say, what's the new features thing? Uh, it's from here. It's in... Is it in game? No, it's not here, is it? Is it Interface? Always open production queue. Do, 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 do. Show yields. Nope. Wow, I'm not seeing it. I know it's here somewhere. I'm, it's probably right in front of my face and I'm missing it. But, uh... Or maybe it's in... Maybe you have to do it at the, uh, the main game level. It feels like that would be weird. But anyway, it's in here somewhere. Apologies for not being able to see that for some reason. But, uh... You can probably just Google it and find it. So, anyway. Alright, so there's our sailing. Definitely want to get some sailing out because I kind of want to get our ships out as soon as possible. Find the other people. Just so I know how bad things are going to be based on where their, <laughs> their capitals are settled. Um, let's go ahead and work on mining. We have a lot of uh, hilly terrain nearby. I think that's going to be okay. We do want to, we can't ignore science. We are going to focus a little bit more on culture than I normally do, but we are also going to have to, you know, respect science for sure. Grow to three pop just in time for us to get the settler out. That's going to be perfect. All right, let's go ahead and take an attack here. One more attack, we'll be able to finish that off. That's his best. All right, uh, we are dealing with some barbarians right now. Let's go ahead and lock that in real quick. And I usually like the faith in gold. Sure, why not? I mean, getting an early pantheon could be very helpful. All right, where do we want you to settle? Um, I want to deselect you. Down here. It's just off the river, which I don't think we can settle on the river anyway because of the other city. But it's close enough that if we want to put a... Uh, an aqueduct or anything like that that's still accessible. One, two, three. It's a little outside the range of the turtle. I mean, it's within range, but I mean, three tiles is a little hard to get to. We'd have to buy out to that probably. And we are within a range of the amber. Uh, it's good. Uh, once we clear this thing out, it's be a good place for a like a campus or something like that with two mountain adjacency. Some stone nearby. Still room for another city over here. Obviously, room for cities up this way. Yeah, I think this is fine. It's close by. It's going to be easy for us to get to. Um, go ahead and get that rolling right away. I think that's going to be okay. All right. Uh, civics. Uh, let's just start working on foreign trade first. But we'll probably swap off of that once we get rolling a little bit. I mean, I do want to get the galley out. But we may need the slinger to help out with some of this mess. I'm going to get a slinger out first. Gets rid of that. Gets us some little bit of error score. I'm not really expecting to go for a uh, a uh, any sort of golden age or anything like that here, but we should be able to at least get out of the um, the current age, get into the normal age, which I guess is okay. I really like doing the dark age into heroic ages. Obviously, those are those are a lot of fun. All right. Um, 
you do have a promotion. Let's do some of you want. Take your promotion. Uh, I'm probably, just in case this unit sticks around forever, I mean, we still probably want the amphibious. Um, just so we don't have a penalty when we're attacking from C. So I think that's going to be good. So we'll go down Tortoise. Actually, we could have gone in either direction, but we'll do Tortoise. It's going to be okay. All right. So uh, just hail up a tick. Kind of keep an eye on this guy as he's moving across. The scout should still be okay. We're going to move once this guy gets done. Or actually, once the slinger gets done, we'll move it up there. A lot of hilly terrain. It's going to be a little hard for us to tra uh, traverse up that way, but we should be okay. I guess that guy killed himself and then... We held up the full amount that we took damage from. All right, let's go ahead and put a Forta, Fortaleza. Fortaleza. Don't know how to pronounce that. I apologize. Um, hmm. I mean, production is going to be slow until it grows a little bit. Uh, although it's going to take 20 turns for it to grow, really. Let's see here. Can we... Work something that's like two food over here. Yeah, let's do that instead. Just to grow a little bit quicker. Yeah, we'll just do the monument for now. I mean, it's going to take a little while, but we'll get it there eventually. Could actually move this guy here and let this guy just attack me. Probably can take a few attacks. Um, might even be able to heal through it and then just he'll die. But it's also possible he just sits there and doesn't do anything. All right, warrior is good to roll out. Well, let's just start getting you up this direction. Fortify there. Maybe he'll maybe he'll attack us. Maybe he won't. Right, there's our slinger. That's going to help out as well. Let's just start moving you up that way. And could go for the galley. I do want to go ahead and get a builder out. It's going to take us too long. Well, let's see. Seven. Yeah, it's going to take us what? Twelve more turns. Actually, more than that, probably about 14, 15 more turns to get a, a builder, buy a builder. So I think at that case, we'll just go ahead and get one out real quick. Nothing crazy going on yet. Oh, I was not expecting this guy to attack us, but there you go. Yeah, with these two guys now, now with this guy here, we're not going to be able to stick around with the scout. Run away. Alrighty. Um, and we are going to want to work our way up to Archery. Also want to open up Campus pretty quickly as well. Let's go ahead and get Animal Husbandry out of the way. Well, we don't really have anything to do that. Let's just get Pottery then. Never mind. We're actually going to need a little bit of uh, probably some granaries just to get some growth anyway, especially in this city down here. Yeah, that quadrium is going to cause some troubles. Well, he almost killed us. I think we'll be able to get away in time. May come back and shoot my slinger, which we'll see how that goes down. It's a pretty strong unit early game, to be fair. Um, probably need to get us a galley out to go after it. Hmm, I don't think we can take another shot here, so never mind. We're just going to have to let that encampment live to fight another day. Just chill. We'll get us a galley out here as soon as this builder's done and move it up there to give us a little bit of support. All right, um, could hook up the quarry, but I think just getting a mine here right away is actually going to be very helpful. A little bit more production, some food, some good food over here as well, though. Uh, yeah, let's go and get the galley out.
A couple more turns on foreign trade and we can swap off of that. Alright, let's go ahead and I guess we'll hook up the stone and then we'll probably come down here and like plop a farm or something like that just to help that city out a little bit. One more turn on foreign trade. No man ever wetted There's pottery. And then left it. It's just the granary. That's going to be helpful. Got a lot of good plains tiles, but obviously that means not as much food. So we will definitely want to get some of those down. Uh, and we could harvest this, but once we get masonry, which we don't have yet. But I think just going and getting the, the quarry down is going to be okay. And swap off foreign trades, pick up craftsmanship. And we should be able to get our third tile improvement. Uh, very quickly, so that's going to be just good. All right. Um, some of these are not going to be improved very easily, are they? Would really like to get up to this. Okay, this gives us trade rock capacity, not movement. It's just the lighthouse that gets us movement then. Which we do want, for sure. Masonry gives us the harvesting stone, battery ram, pyramids, ancient walls. None of those really matter right this second. Archery would be very useful. Let's start working on, I don't know, let's start working on astrology a little bit. Uh, let's get that at least part way. We may hold off on finishing it, see if we can get the boost by finding a natural wonder. Uh, but I do want to get to the great lighthouse. That's going to be very useful for us. Just helps us get in position a lot quicker. Uh, just chill, Mr. Slinger, for now. I'm going to wait till we get the galley up there to help support us. Or at least find that quadream. Um, couldn't buy out to this, but I don't think that's what we want to do. So I think we're just going to actually drop a farm right here. Get this a little bit of... Tiny bit of growth, not much. And... Something else I was going to look at, but I don't remember. Oh, well. Oh, that's what I was going to look at. We're looking at... We're almost at uh, 300 gold. So I could buy another builder. Uh, oh, it's actually at 320. But I may just save up for a little bit longer. I don't know. We'll see. I'll have to think about it. 320 is our goal, though. We'll see what happens when we get closer. All right. So Scout is ready to roll out again. Really not much else he can do, though, to be perfectly honest. What I'm probably just going to do with you, Mr. Scout, is just park you somewhere over here just to make sure that no barbarian encampments kind of pop up over here um just cover all of our land just i mean it's, it can be good to farm barbarian encampments to be fair but i think i'm okay with not doing that right now all right let's, un uh, let's undo these let's just make sure we do lock that in i do want to get a little bit more growth coming from the city although it is currently housing capped so to be fair so maybe the growth is not as big of a deal we need to get us a granary here actually Actually, that might be worth buying. Mm, Granary and I of these places would be worth buying, actually, at this point. Just to make sure we can continue to grow. Alright, just uh, alert there, Mr. Scout. That's going to be okay. Two turns on our galley. And then we'll probably immediately go right into a granary here. Or we could also buy a granary. 390 though. It's pretty expensive. There's our galley. Definitely want to start moving up here. Keep an eye on things. Try and chase down that quadrum. The quadrum I think is going to be a little bit stronger than the galley. But we should be able to hit and run hopefully. That's the goal. A second galley would be very useful. But we're going to need the granary first. Now, things feel a little bit slow because I've been playing on standard speed for most of my games lately. Uh, and again, this is on epic speed. There's somebody already built Stonehenge, which is okay. I don't really want to move in with my last movement just in case it's right there. And it is right there. All right, so we know where that is. So we can start moving these guys in now. Ah, this does pretty good damage. We still have to run away here in a moment, but I think we're going to be okay. It's going to get it pretty low. I 
don't think he can kill us in one shot if I do this, though. Pretty sure he can't. So we'll do that. He's going to be able to get another shot on us. It's going to put us really low. But I think we'll be okay. All right, looks like one more turn on Astrology. Yeah, we're going to be fine. <laughs> I say that. <laughs> we may need to run away here. Ouch. Um... And if this guy moves faster than us, we could be in trouble. I can't remember how fast Quadreams move. Quadreams. Three movement, one range. So if I move one, two, three, he can move one, two, three. He won't be able to shoot me. I'll be able to heal up just to make sure that this galley stays alive. So I think that, unless, of course, barbarians have faster movement, which would be really sad indeed. All right, astrology can be swapped off of. Let's go ahead and start working on riding a little bit. Still haven't found anybody else. I guess that means that... Uh, um, obviously, we don't have anybody on our island, so... I just need a little bit of healing for him to be able to swoop back out there. I do want to try and get the kill here with the Slinger. I mean, we may not use a lot of archery, seeing as we're on an island and we're probably not going to see anybody else. Oh, hello. Another Quadrium. Well, that's just... Great. All right, with move you up here, he's going to shoot me. I should still have time to get a shot off before I die, though. I can also move this guy up. could just swap these two, actually. Actually, that's exactly what I'm going to do. That'll work. All right, completed the monument. We definitely need this granary uh, as soon as possible. And it's going to be very critical for us. I also need this Gala to get healed up as soon as possible. All right, so we did get the boost to archery. Perfect. Um, since this guy's running kind of around that direction, I'm going to move you up here to try and take that for us. Move you away to go get healed up. I'm not sure where the Quadri went that was almost dead. Grand over here is going to help out a lot. All right, it came back. We're still going to take this. We do have, I'm glad we have the promotion that uh, defend against range attacks because that guy's definitely pinging us pretty good there. All right, uh, second granary's down, or the granary's down, I should say. I, I think, I mean, I do want another settler pretty soon, but I also want another galley just to kind of clear this stuff out and start looking for people. Let's do the galley. I mean, finding some trading partners, stuff like that, will be very useful. Start getting some, some money coming in. Guess I could have bought the granary here with the money I have. Hello, another barbarian encampment. Um, I still think this one's very critical. Could go away from the faith in gold, although I would like to get... Uh, we got about, what, three, four more turns? Let's see, four. I think we've, we, technically I think we have five more turns, but we're getting a little bit more than one somehow. Um, so it could be sooner, but five more turns and we'll have our Pantheon and we can swap off of that. All right. Um, we do already have the boost of military tradition. It's not super critical for what we're working on, to be fair. Let's go ahead and put some work into the state workforce first. Well, that's going to be critical to getting us another government. Let's back you away from the edge here. Move you down. One more tick and this guy should be healed up enough to move out. Right, we're actually... I was going to go 30 minutes on this first episode. Um, we're actually about 34 and a half minutes. But seeing as I spent the first 10 minutes talking, uh, I think that's a good balance. So we're going to put a cut in here. Uh, and when we come back, we're going to continue this one tournament victory game. Uh, again, trying to get all of the capitals, declare war, take all the capitals in a single turn. It's not going to be easy. It's going to take a lot of units. Uh, but I don't know. It's just something different. This is, this is what I've, I've come to. I've played so much Civilization VI uh, that I'm coming to come up, you know, I've, I've resorted to coming up with creative ways of winning.
for some strange reason. So anyway, I do appreciate you watching and I hope you join me again next time. Please, if you do think this is fun and interesting and want to see kind of crazy stuff like this or have any other ideas for victories, please uh, give me a like, put some comments in the comments below. And as always, if you haven't subscribed and you want to see more stuff like this, please feel free to do that as well. I do appreciate you watching. Thank you and goodbye.